Hi everybody. Um, so this last lecture today is about um, every day uh, is about I'm sorry the lottery by Shirley Jackson, um, and this is a fascinating story. It's it's really one of my favorites um, because it has two very different um, a beginning and ending is very different, and Shirley Jackson kind of plays on this idea of small town America. Um, and she opens up by talking about this lottery that's happening. And usually lottery means something good. Um, we associate lottery with winning, with money, with success. Um, and we get the, the, the feeling that the lottery is not that big of a deal in the town. Um, it's a normal summer day. Kids are out playing. They're out of school. They got other things on their mind. Um, it says the lottery took less than two hours. Um, everybody could make it home by noon for dinner, for lunch. Um, kids are out playing and you see the kids at the beginning, they start to, um, gather stones in their pockets and this is foreshadowing for what's to come. Um, and the kids are kind of gathering, the boys are playing, the girls are playing, the men start showing up and they're kind of talking and chattering and it's just, you get this small town America feeling. Um, the language is very colloquial, um, and you, you, you see the arrival of the women and they kind of have their house uh, dresses on and um, these are just hardworking everyday normal people in small town America. Um, and then this black box arrives um, along with Mr. Summers. The, the name again is very interesting. Um, this black box comes and everybody gets a little bit uncomfortable. Um, it's not a significant box. It's not, a, it's not ornate. It's simple. It's peeled. It's chipped. It's clearly been in use for many, 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 many years. Um, black, of course, is representative of the idea of death. Um, and they put it on, they want to put it on the stool. And he asked for some help from the men folk. And there's a bit of hesitation from the crowd as if nobody really wants to get near or touch this box. So we get this sort of sense of foreboding, this tone that's developing, that's shifting tone from this sort of light-hearted summer day to something more serious is happening and it's kind of a, as I said, a sense of foreboding is being developed. And um, she goes into the, the background of the lottery. She basically says they don't even know what the origins are anymore. They don't have the original stones. There's rumors that this box is made from a previous box. So we get the implication that this has been happening year after year after year after year for as long as this village can remember. Um, and we have some of these characters who are just kind of standing to the sides. So we have Mr. Martin and his son. We have Mr. Summers. Um, and Mr. Summers and Mr. Graves, which is also a very interesting name, um, they are the ones that are in charge of creating the, the lottery tickets. So it's blank pieces of paper. Um, and on one, as we come to find out, is a black mark. Um, but we're understanding that this is routine, this is normal, this is every day. Um, the box is not particularly special. Um, it, it kind of holds a specific meaning, but nothing about it screams that it is it kind of holds the power of life and death. Um, we also get the feeling that this kind of process represents the old ways and how the old ways are not dying, the old versus the new, the struggle of the two. Um, so we're kind of fighting progress in this case, and progress would be good because progress is away from the lottery. So as we read, um, people start kind of milling about, and they have the usual patterns of behavior that are happening, and no one seems to know, think that this is out of the ordinary. They all know what's coming. They all know what to expect. So they go through these kind of formalities, which really don't mean anything to anyone. Um, and you, you get the feeling that town has been through this over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and they have an interesting set of gender dynamics. Um, it's very old, uh, old world where the men are kind of the heads of the household and they represent the household and they do the first drawing. Um, and so, the widows, as you see, um, have they ask the widows who's drawing for this family or this family, and the the son says that he's going to draw, 
and they say, well, glad to see your mother's got a man to do it. Um, so we have kind of this backwards mentality of gender roles and gender dynamics. Um, and we have this sort of gibberish that's happening between neighbors when uh, Tessie, Mrs. Hutchinson, runs up and she says, oh, I forgot what day it was. She's still drying her hands on her apron. Um, it's just normal behavior. Um, and they're kind of chatting together and they, she goes to find her husband. And then a hush falls in the crowd and something is about to happen. And we get this tension building towards the, towards the, the climax. And he calls the men one by one by one of the households and they each go up and grab a piece of paper. And you see this sort of tension rising in the way that they're interacting with each other. And um, the, the stool that it's sitting on is very interesting because there's an argument that the stool represents um, sort of the Holy Trinity. Um, it could also represent sort of the body politic in the American way. Um, it's very interesting if you kind of do some literature, some, some reading on this literature, what the interpretations of the symbolism of that stool really could be. Um, and so after they draw, um, they kind of talk about how time goes faster and faster, and it feels like they just did the lottery. So before this, everyone was eager. They showed up. They were having fun. And now that the reality of it is setting in, they're complaining that it's too fast. Um, life goes too fast. And so this is kind of representative of the old ways dying, and they're complaining that maybe, you know, maybe this, this, these old ways um, aren't sustainable. And as they realize what's happening, they look around and they start chattering about which person it could be. Um, they realize it's the Hutchinson family. So he's drawn the black mark, and so now they put it all back in the box, and they, his family and only his family redraws. And there is no delineation between age, gender. Everybody draws, the kids, the adults. Um, and Tessie, um, she gets upset and she says, you didn't let him do it, it's not fair, it's not fair. Whereas before, if you had been another family, you get the, the understanding, the feeling that she would have been just fine with it. Um, it's just the way it is. So the, before that, they do talk about um, the old man Warner. He kind of represented of this very old world thinking. He says he's been through 77 lotteries. Um, so we get to understand that no one is safe from lottery, even, even infants. And he says, Next thing you know, they'll be wanting to go back to living in caves. Nobody, uh, nobody work anymore. Live that way for a while. Um, and he's saying some places have actually quit the lotteries, and he doesn't believe it. He said that's that's ludicrous. So we see this this dying of the old ways, and we see this town that's kind of fighting against the idea of progress here. And we also learn that the reason they do it is for the harvest. Um, he says it used to be a saying: lottery in June, corn be heavy soon. So we understand that this is sort of this archaic, um, archaic belief system in, in some type of sacrifice for the sake of the good. And we start to question that as we see the only character who is sort of fully developed here is Tessie. Um, so Tessie is upset and she's saying, it's not fair, it's not fair. And she even says, what about um, Don and, and Eva, her children um, who have married off? And they say, you know how it is. The children draw with the, the husband's family. So she's even willing to sacrifice her own kids for the sake of it not being her. Um, so we get this idea of like selfish culture um, happening in the midst of this sort of mob mentality. So they draw again and they look and the kids are so excited. It's not them. They will hold up their blank piece of paper. Um, the little boy sees that it's not his and the father sees it's not his, and so they, they look around and they realize it's Tessie. And Tessie's reaction um, is very interesting. First, Old Man Warner says something very telling. He says, it's not the way it used to be. People aren't the way they used to be. And he's saying this in, in the light of time is changing too fast, but we are looking at it and seeing that this is very archaic, and in fact it hasn't changed from old, old uh, traditions. And so... We're supposed to see this as an ironic statement. Um, and so they realize it's Tessie. She starts sort of crying and screaming and saying it's not fair. And Mr. Summers says, all right, folks, let's finish this up quickly. And this is where it takes an incredibly dark turn. The mob mentality sets in, and this town with absolutely no pretense turns 
and they grab stones. The, the women, the children already have piles of stones, and every one of them becomes a murderer, and they stone Tessie to death. And um, it's she kind of goes down screaming in the last line, it isn't fair, it isn't right, and then they were upon her. So you see her kind of get stoned to death in this big open area, and it's a really horrific image, and it's very dark, and the way that it's told is very matter-of-fact. There's no, um, there's very little emotion in it. Um, the narrator doesn't have a lot of emotional input. It's fitting with the theme of this is just how things are in this town, and we see them as backwards. They don't see them as backwards, so it's all about perception um, and cultural perception. So it's a very, very interesting read. I love this story. And I hope you guys did too.